welcome everyone tonight in jesus name the lord appreciates your coming i appreciate your coming and our members appreciate the work has been trained to be a blessing to them you'll not lose your reward in jesus name father we thank you for tonight we bless your name for this privilege of being trained we're asking lord that the study the teaching the message will not be lost on any of us in jesus name open our eyes of understanding and make us people who are ready every time for the coming of the lord in jesus mighty name we pray god bless you, you can sit down tonight we're talking on what almost everybody is familiar with and the coming of christ the rapture imminent soon to take place and it will take place suddenly and we need to be ready everyone needs to be ready so that the day will not come upon us unawares tonight's message is readiness for the imminent rapture of the saints readiness very important we're prepared we're saved we're holy and there is no impediment hindrance between us and god any moment readiness for the imminent rapture rapture is the catching away of the saints and it is imminent that means it can happen any moment paul the apostle and the early believers were expecting it could have happened in their days if they thought like that in their time how much more should they were nearer the end than anybody could think about and it's the rapture it is the resurrection of those who are dead and then the transformation of the body of those who are alive and then will meet the lord in the air the difference between the rapture and the coming of the lord is at the rapture christ comes for the saints and he doesn't meet us here on earth we're raptured we're caught up and we meet him in the air at the second coming he comes on the earth and then he comes to judge he comes to rescue the children of israel and then he comes to establish his millennial reign readiness for the imminent rapture of the saints of the saints is not coming to rapture sinners it's not coming to rapture religious people who only follow the tradition of worship it's not coming to rapture the people who are good in themselves and they think they're good enough they do not need salvation they do not need the redemption of christ on the cross of calvary it's not coming to rapture those people it's coming to rapture the saints readiness for the imminent rapture of the saints we're coming to first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope that watch ignorant must come to you and to me with surprise the apostle is going to talk about the rapture is going to talk about the resurrection is going to talk about the coming of the lord jesus christ for the glorious church the holy church the sanctified church and now he's saying i do not want you to be ignorant why would he use the word ignorant for them have they not heard they did not hear they did not know about the coming of the lord look at chapter 1 verse 10 in chapter 1 verse 10 it talks to the uh, 
to the Thessalonian believers and he says and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come he talks about them waiting for the son of God from heaven so they had heard about it and yet he's saying i don't want you to be ignorant and he says he has delivered us from the laws to come they would have known that when christ comes those who are left behind they will they will face the judgment to come look at chapter 2 and in verse 19 in chapter 2 verse 19 it tells us for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing and not even ye in the presence of the Lord Jesus at his coming and so they had heard about the coming of the Lord and yet is seen there are people who have heard and they remain ignorant look at chapter 3 in chapter 3 we're looking at verse 13 in chapter 3 verse 13 talking about the coming of the Lord to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our father at the coming look at that at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints he's been talking about it over and over and yet he said you have heard but many are still ignorant even though they have heard over and over and then he tells us in chapter 4 verse 14 chapter 4 verse 14 tells us it says for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which live in Jesus will God bring with him there shouldn't have been any ignorance in the Thessalonians church God bring with him is coming again chapter 5 verse 23 in chapter 5 verse 23 it says that the God of peace the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless look at this unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ coming of our Lord Jesus Christ if there was any church where should be no iota of uh, ignorance it should have been uh, the church at Thessalonica but then Paul the Apostle said I've told you often you have heard this often and I don't want any of you to be ignorant you see if we're ignorant of what we hear every time it means we're not thinking about what we have heard we're not meditating upon what we have heard we're not living in line with what we have heard in our church here the Lord has so inspired and they educated and lightened all our preachers and we always mention without holiness no one shall see the Lord and yet do you know even though we hear very often we can still be ignorant because we're here we believe it as a doctrine but we don't align our lives our conversation our our commitment and everything we do to that which we heard which we have heard often and for the apostle paul to be talking to the thessalonians and he's saying now thessalonians i want to talk about something and i don't want you to be ignorant you think he was bringing a new message and a new revelation that they had never heard about before it tells us in second thessalonians chapter one second thessalonians chapter one and we're looking at verse seven in second thessalonians chapter seven reading from verse seven it says and to you who are troubled rest with us 
when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, then it says in verse 8, it says in that verse 8, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us here that those who are troubled, those who are persecuted, those who are going through some deep waters, rest. You know that Christ is coming. But you see, those Thessalonian believers were not thinking of those things. They come to church and they hear the word of his coming. And then when they face trouble or when they face trial, they do not think of what they had heard about the coming of the Lord. Look at chapter 2 verse 1. In chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians verse 1, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him he was emphasizing to them in every chapter he is coming how could you be ignorant of a topic that is mentioned every time in every chapter and then in chapter 3 verse 5 Chapter 3, verse 5, it tells us, And uh, the Lord directs your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Into the patient waiting for Christ. You see, when we hear something all the time, like follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, you will think that because we hear that every time that we're not ignorant and yet we could still be ignorant of that which we've heard often. Now, what's the result of being ignorant of what we have heard often, Matthew chapter 24, verses 38 and 39. Matthew chapter 24, looking at verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And then in verse 39, it says, and the new not. That's uh, two words telling us they were ignorant. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. That's the result of ignorance. Um, Noah had uh, publicized to them, had preached unto them. He was a preacher of righteousness. Turn, repent, be reconciled to God, and make sure that your life is a life of righteousness because the flood is coming. They heard it 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, many years, all the time that Noah was building the ark, they heard, but they remained ignorant. Is anybody here who has heard about the coming of the Lord and yet when he gets home, all through in his family, in her family, all through in the market, in the community, all through in the workplace, in the office, anybody here that although he knows in the head Christ is coming, when difficulties arise, when conflicts come, and when dangers come, and when persecution comes, or when when sickness comes, he never remembers the coming of the Lord. That's being ignorant. And Paul, the apostle by inspiration, is saying, you've heard it, now meditate on it. You've heard it, now act on it. You've heard it, now live by it. But these people, at the time of Noah, it says they were eating and drinking, and they were marrying and giving a marriage, and their concentration was on things of the world and then they, they remain ignorant of what they had heard often Noah mentioning and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be so shall also the coming of the son of man be that's why we need to be ready readiness for the imminent rapture of the sin. Three points we're looking at tonight. Number one, 
our comprehension of sleep in Christ. Those who slept in Christ, those who have slept in Christ, don't be ignorant about them. Number two, the catching up of the saints in Christ. The rapture is referred to, he will come, we will hear the sound of the trumpet and will be caught up. The catching up of saints in Christ. Number three, the comfort of the scriptures through Christ. The comfort of the scriptures through Christ. We're coming to number one. Number one, our comprehension of sleep in Christ. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. In verse 14, in verse 14 it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, which sleep in Jesus, which sleep in Jesus Christ, will God bring with him. Now, what do we understand by sleep in Christ? When a believer dies, he remained in Christ before he died. And now he dies, and the Bible says he just slept in Christ. Sleep. Now, what is the understanding, the comprehension, and the implication of sleeping in Christ? When you sleep, you are not conscious. Does, not, does that mean when a believer dies, he has slept, his soul, his spirit, not conscious, and he's uh, somewhere, and he doesn't know anything going on at all? We need to understand is the body that goes to sleep because it's laid down as somebody sleeping but the spirit and the soul do not sleep let's understand that immediately a believer dies a spirit his soul will go to god immediately only the body sleeps look at acts chapter 7 reading from verse 56 acts chapter 7 reading from verse 56 it tells us about the body the spirit the soul so we know the part that sleeps and said behold i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing at the right hand of god that's jesus christ waiting standing that when uh, stephen dies he will receive the soul and the spirit immediately look at verse 59 in verse 59 and they stone stephen calling upon god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit lord jesus already standing waiting for him receive my spirit the spirit goes to god immediately the believer dies is not waiting for the rapture for the resurrection for the spirit to go to heaven look at verse 60 in verse 60 after he said receive my spirit he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice lord lay not this sin to their charge and when he had said this he fell asleep the body fell asleep and let's go to ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21 in ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21 who knows the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast of the animal that goeth downward to the earth when an animal dies everything about the animal 
goes into the grave because there is no provision of redemption there's no provision of heaven for the animal the spirit the soul whatever the animal has breathing having life once it dies it goes down to the grave it goes down to the earth who knoweth the spirit of man that goes upward when a believer dies the spirit goes upward ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12 verse 1 in ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them it's talking about the time that the soul the soul will go to god look at verse 7 in verse 7 then shall the dust return to the earth as it was they shall dust that's the body return to the earth dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return it's talking about the body and the spirit shall return unto god who gave it as a believer dies that same very moment the spirit goes out of the body and that spirit goes to god who gave it and it's only the body that falls asleep that is now laid on the ground in daniel chapter 12 daniel chapter 12 we're reading from verse 2 in daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth dust of the earth the body that had been laid in the grave sleeping it says in the earth shall awake on the day of resurrection what happens at the resurrection the uh, spirit and the soul that had been up with god in heaven of the believer joins the body that is resurrected and then they come together so that now body spirit and soul spirit soul and body will be united again on the day of uh, resurrection and it says some to everlasting life those who are children of God those who are righteous as their spirit and soul will join with their resurrected body they will go to life eternal forever and ever and some to shame and everlasting content those who are unjust and those who are evil and they died in the condition of sinfulness unrighteousness and iniquity and transgression and already their spirit and their soul had been in hell like that rich man you remember the story that jesus told the spirit and the soul went to hell but the body was here on earth because it was buried and now they'll join together and they go to everlasting content and then in verse 3 we're told of the reward of righteousness and they that the wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever and we have made allusion to luke chapter 16 but let's look at it luke chapter 16 we're reading from verse 22 in luke chapter 16 reading from verse 22 thank you god bless you please open your bible and it came to pass that the beggar died look at this and was carried by the angels into abraham's bosom it was carried the spirit and the soul carried carried by angels to abraham's bosom the body of course remained here on earth because if they didn't find the body they wouldn't know what had happened the beggar died the body remained here to be buried by people and the spirit and the soul they were carried by angels to abram's bosom and the rich man also died and he was buried 
a soul was not buried you can't bury the soul with the body a spirit was not buried you cannot bury the spirit with the body it's the body that is buried and it's the body that goes back to the doors look at verse 23 in verse 23 and in hell he lit up his eyes being in torment and saith abraham afar off and lazarus in his bosom the rich man died and he was buried but his spirit went up and then the lord sent that into hell because he was a sinner he died as a non-believer he died as a person who did not know the lord and the spirit was being judged in hell but the body was buried the understanding the lord is giving us is that is the body that falls asleep when it says they slept in christ they were in christ but their body gave way to death and now they are buried but the soul the spirit goes to heaven but for the unbeliever and in hell in verse 23 he lift up his eyes being in torment and seeth abraham abraham too had died many centuries before but the body was buried you can read that in genesis but his soul his spirit had gone to god and now the spirit body that he is if you look at the spirit on the other side will look exactly like the human body that had been buried and then so Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom look at verse 24 in verse 24 and he cried and said he was not sleeping there those who die if you die in Christ you go to meet the Lord immediately like Stephen and then he cried in the case of those who go to hell they do not sleep when they get there they are in torments because they didn't have salvation and they were not protected from the wrath to come and now he cried and said father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus the spirit does not sleep the soul does not sleep after death will still talk or be conscious if there is torment for those who go to the other side they feel the torment they sense the torment they're conscious of the torment because the spirit does not sleep after death is the body that sleeps he cried and he said saint lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame and let's come to luke chapter 23 verse 42 in luke chapter 23 verse 42 and we're told that jesus was on the cross and this thief who is talking to christ now is uh, also on the cross and then he said unto jesus lord remember me when thou comest in, in into thy kingdom the thief said i shouldn't have been here if i knew yeah, what i know now and i see you now and i know you have a kingdom you are the king of the jews and you have a kingdom it's going to be an eternal kingdom remember me i repent i turn away if i could have another chance to live i would live right i would live correctly so remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom in verse 43 verse 43 says and jesus said unto him verily i say unto thee today today shall thou be with me in paradise that thief on the cross died and the body was buried just like jesus died and the body was buried but the spirit the soul the inner man the real man of the heart 
today shall not be with me in paradise. The body was left for the people to bury, but the spirit, the soul, immediately will go to paradise. That's why uh, Paul the Apostle said in Philippians chapter 1, reading from verse 21. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To die is gain. Why? Because if he died, he knew his spirit will go to be with the Lord immediately. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, it says, For I am in a stretch betwixt you, having a desire to depart, that he is to die and to be with Christ, which is far better. It says, If I died, immediately I'll be with Christ and that is far better it tells us in second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6 second corinthians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 6 it says therefore we're always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we're absent from the lord while we're still here and uh, we are still living, we are at home in the body. The spirit and the soul is still inside the body. We are absent from the Lord. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, We are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body. That is, when the believer dies, he is absent from the body and to be present with the Lord immediately. Immediately, a believer dies, the body is left on the earth for those of us who are here to take care of the body and bury the body. But the spirit and the soul goes to the Lord to be present with the Lord. Now that we have the proper, better understanding of sleep in Christ. Let's come back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we're now looking at verses 14 and uh, 15 and 16. In verse 14, this is point number two now. Point number two, it says in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. In verse 15, it says in verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. This is not supposition. This is not Pauline opinion, and this is not any theory propounded by any apostle. We say this by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, proceed, or hinder them that are asleep. Then in verse 16, it says in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trump of and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then he tells us in verse 17, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Then which uh, those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's the that's the rapture together with them that is with those who have risen from the dead in the clouds will meet the Lord in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord that's the catching up of saints in Christ that's the rapture of saints in Christ the Lord talked about that in John chapter 14 John chapter 14, reading from verse 1, it tells us, uh, John chapter 14, verse 1, and it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Then it says in verse 2, it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Look at verse 3. Here is the coming of the Lord for the saints. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. 
and receive you unto myself. I will come again and receive you unto myself. And then he says that where I am, there ye may be also. The believers, true believers, the saints of God, true saints of God, the Lord will come and then as it stays in the air and the dead in Christ hear the voice of the Son of Man. They will rise and they will go up and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, will be raptured and together with them and will ever be with the Lord as that happened before look at this example acts chapter 1 we're reading from verse 9 acts chapter 1 reading from verse 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight as he was talking to them to show them how the rapture will take place at the time of his coming for the saints. They were looking at him, they saw him all of a sudden without any visible hand assisting or supporting. He was taken up, he was caught up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And then in verse 10, we're told, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, that's where the people who are raptured, that's where they're taken to, and we shall be forever with him. He said, steadfastly they were looking toward heaven. As he went up, behold, two men, angels, appearing like men stood by them in white apparel. And then in verse 11, there's the declaration from those angels, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven, into heaven, this same Jesus, not another Jesus, our Savior, Redeemer, and the one who promised is coming again, and will come as King of kings and Lord of lords, this same Jesus, which is taking up from you into heaven not just uh, you know somewhere that is not known just in the clouds but into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven the same thing that happened to him will happen to the saints they'll be taken up they'll be cut up they'll be raptured and taken to heaven it happened even in the old testament we're told in second kings chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 reading from verse 11 in second kings chapter 2 verse 11 and it came to pass as they still went on and talked elijah and elisha that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and elijah went up nobody pushed him elijah went up there's not a ladder to climb elijah went up by the supernatural power of god the force of gravity everything was lost and the pool that normally pulls anything down whenever you throw up all that pool was suspended because here was a demonstration of somebody alive and he's not dead and the power of god comes as it will, as it will happen to multitudes of saints at the time of the rapture elijah went up by one wind into heaven before him enoch had experienced the same thing in hebrews chapter 11. hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 5. in hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 5 Please open your Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. His generation was corrupt. His community was corrupt. His city was corrupt. But he singled himself out. 
he knew that judgments will come he knew that all those who are speaking at speeches against the lord he knew they'll face the judgment of god and by faith he was walking with god and walking with god in everything god had said he agreed with god because two cannot work together except they be agreed god was righteous he accepted to be righteous and god was a faithful god he accepted to be faithful and god wanted holiness without which no man shall see him and he decided by his grace and by faith in the lord he will remain holy and they were told uh, the time came uh, that he was translated that he should not see death and was not found because god had translated him that's rapture god had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased god and now we're told in verse 6 concerning those of us who are alive who are expecting the same thing that happened to enoch the same thing that happened to elijah and the same thing that happened when Jesus went up and the same thing that will happen to as many as have been caught up in the air. Without faith, it's impossible to place him. We must have faith in the Lord. We must have faith that he is who he says he is. He will do what he said he will do. And the price that had been paid for salvation, for our redemption, we must believe that that is the only price Price and the only sacrifice that will take us uh, to be in fellowship and relationship with the Lord we must believe that God cannot have cannot have any fellowship with iniquity he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him that that verse is following the verse that talks about Enoch being raptured tells us then it's important that we'll have that same faith in the Lord and faithfulness to the Lord until Christ comes. We're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 51, it's about the catching up of the saints, of the righteous, of the believers, the true believers in Christ, catching them up and rapturing and taking them to heaven. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. And the generation of Enoch did not believe this mystery, but Enoch believed the mystery. And the generation and the sons of the prophets at the time of Elijah did not see to this mystery and did not prepare for that mystery. They only knew, do you know, that the Lord will take your master away from your head today. And Elisha said, please hold your peace. The time of preparation is not the time of talking, talking, and talking. I know it hold your peace it's a mystery but it's going to happen and I pray that at your own time at our own time this mystery will not elude you in Jesus name behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep you understand now we shall not all die but we shall all be changed we shall all be changed those who are for the lord and those who are in christ and those who are living in expectation in readiness for his coming we shall all be changed in verse 52 it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye before anyone can turn around to take this or take this and before anyone will say wait for me i need to set this right in my life wait for me i need to return this money that I stole and the spirit of God has been saying uh, returning but I've been delayed before I correct this issue and correct this issue and I'll be conscious void of offense towards God and man there'll be no chance to do that we must be ready every time because in a moment in the two 
quicken up an eye at the last drop for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed and we shall be changed the time is coming and is fast approaching is the imminent rapture of the church the imminent return of the lord and the imminent catching up of the saints it tells us in colossians chapter 3 reading from verse 1 colossians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 1 if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above as we're expecting uh, that that mystery will take place anytime the coming of the lord rapture will take place anytime seek those things which are above put your attention put your affection and put your love on things above where christ seated on the right hand of god in verse 2 it says set your affections on things above be looking up every time in expectation be looking up every time in readiness for the coming of the lord set your affection on things above not on things on the earth do not allow yourself to be carried away like the people at the time of noah they were eating and drinking they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark and they knew not because it came to them by surprise suddenly and then they were all swept up by the flood you set your affection on things above not on things on the earth look at verse 3 it says in verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God it says in verse 4 it says when Christ who is our life shall appear that's the rapture when Christ, who is, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. I pray you will not miss it in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Here is what will happen that day of rapture for our conversation is in heaven our expectation our longing is in heaven from ways also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ in verse 21 who shall change our vile body who shall change our mortal body who shall change our heart bound body it will change the body that it may be fashioned it may be conformed unto his glorious body you remember when jesus christ rose from the dead and the disciples were lodged behind closed doors he didn't have to knock at the door he didn't have to use any key to open the door because of that body the resurrection body he just entered and then it says at that time our body will be fashioned and conformed like unto his glorious body as we're here if the rapture takes place we just go and the ceiling and the roof will not be an hindrance at all we just go through any wall we just go through any roof we just go through any closed door and then it says according to the walking whereby is able even to subdue all things unto himself the Lord is coming and I pray you'll be ready I pray I will be ready say you'll be ready the Lord will make us ready in Jesus name first John chapter 3 verse 1 in first John chapter 3 verse 1 is telling us it says beloved now are we the what manner behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not then in verse 2 in verse 2 it says beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear 
what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear he's talking about when he comes at the time of the rapture when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him even as he is in verse 3 those who are planning to be ready and they are they are expecting to be part of the saints that will go in the rapture and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure we go to the lord of honor and we say lord that which i see not teach thou me if i've done iniquity mistakenly unintentionally or carelessly lord cleanse me and wash me and put me in the right path and make me ready for the time of your coming every man every woman every member of the church every sage that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure we'll come to point number three now the comfort of the scriptures through christ we're looking at first thessalonians chapter 4 reading from verse 18 first thessalonians chapter 4 we're reading from verse 18 wherefore comfort one another with these words comfort one another with these words why did he say that look at verse 13 again in verse 13 of that first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 it says i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep in the thessalonian church some people have died they were believers and there were people that were sorrowful either a wife that had lost the husband husband that had lost the wife a friend who had lost a beloved friend in the lord and so they were sorrowful because the rapture had not taken place and yet my friend is gone and yet my wife is gone and yet my husband is gone or some even lost her children and they said my child is gone and they were now sorrowful that's why it says i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them concerning your relatives concerning your friend concerning a brother a beloved brother that has fallen asleep that he sorrowed not even as others which have no hope the people who say you know their hands are down their shoulders are down their mind is down and they feel like what am i living for so and so is gone why am i here and they're dejected and they drop everything there is no vision there is no ideal there is nothing they're living for now because the person who, who ought to be and who used to be a means of encouragement to get them a means of stirring up for them and the visionary partner who had been a person that will encourage and start them up a prayer partner he is gone because of that they were sorrowful as those that have no hope that's why he now went through the time of the rapture and how things will happen and then he says at the conclusion of everything look for the people who are sorrowful who are dejected whose hands are down and the mind is down and they don't think there's anything to live for now because they're an important personality an important person to me the most important person to me on earth is gone and they are sorrowful look for them and wherefore comfort one another with these words what did he mean by that look at that verse again chapter 4 verse 18 wherefore comfort one another therefore encourage one another therefore console one another therefore come in partnership with one another build them up give them a lifting a lifting up of the hand their soul is drooping therefore go to them and go and encourage them wherefore comfort one another with these words what do you comfort them with you comfort them with the word of prophecy that you know this is what is going to happen all the prophecies of the coming of the Lord all the prophecies of uh, the of the rapture comfort them with
with the word of prophecy. Comfort them with the word of promise. Look at the promise of God. You have a life to live. He has gone to his own reward. She has gone to her own reward. And the Lord has promised you, we shall see again. The promise is there. Comfort them with the word of promise. Comfort them with the word of power. The power of Christ that is able to raise up the dead. Those who have died for so many years and the power of God comes upon them and their graves are open and then the power that is able to change our body and then we are translated to heaven. Comfort them with the word of power. Comfort them with the word of possibilities. Look at the possibilities we have in the Lord. Christ is a, is a greater friend, is a brother that sits close, uh, that is sits close to you than your brother who is gone. Therefore, look at the partnership we have in Christ and comfort them and lift them up with these words. Comfort them with the word of prayer. After you have said everything and it appears our brother, our sister is still saying, yes, I understand what you are saying, but how do you think I will live without my brother who is gone, my husband who is gone, my wife who is gone? How how can I live without so and so? He is the real power and support for me. Anytime I stand like this and I see him there, there is strength in my body to keep on standing. Okay, then I've told you the prophecy. I've given you the promise and I've given you the power, the word of power. Now let's go to the word of prayer and pray together, holding his hand, holding our hand and praying and presenting her presenting him to the Lord let us encourage one another with the word of prayer with the word of praise that we need to praise the Lord every time in every condition in every situation let us still find a place in our heart where we can praise and glorify the name of the Lord and as we do that comfort one another with these words that the words of Scripture that we comfort one another with and as we take the word and we visit our brethren who are bereaved we visit our neighbors who are bereaved we become a source of comfort to them the Lord will comfort them there will be consolation in Jesus name there will be comfort in Jesus name look at Romans chapter 15 reading from verse 4 Romans chapter 15 we're reading from verse 4. It tells us in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, for whatsoever things were reaching aforetime, were reaching for our learning, that we, through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. When you go to those who are sick, when you go to those who are discouraged, when you go to those who feel that there is no hope and they are sorrowful, go to them with the comfort of the scriptures that will give them hope. With the promises of God, with the power of God, with prayer based on the word of God, and they will come alive again, and the Lord will comfort them through you, through me, through us in Jesus name if you yourself had gone through that situation before and the Lord comforted you you will go with that example look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 3 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 3 blessed be God even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of mercies and the God of all comfort. The God, you come to them not with your own understanding. You come to them with the God of all comfort. And the Lord through you will comfort them in Jesus' name. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, in verse 4, who comforteth us? 
in all our tribulation we also were at trial if something like that happened to you before you say my brother do you remember such and such a time it happened to meet you and i know what you are going through i understand what you are going through and this is how the lord comforted me and this is how the lord settled me and god is no respecter of persons he will settle you too he will comfort you too he will lift you up to you. They've gone before us. They are rejoicing in heaven. If they are rejoicing, why are we sorrowful? They are getting their own reward there. If they are getting their reward, why are we going to hands down? And then we are not going to have our reward eventually. God who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort where we we ourselves are comforted of God the Lord has comforted us and then we take that experience to other people and we say I've gone through the same deep waters you are going through I understand how you feel and I believe the Lord who comforted me look at the scripture he gave me and look at the opening he gave me and look at the good things that happened that same God will comfort the people in Jesus name look at verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us who delivered us from so great a day it could have happened to us but the Lord has seen why he delivered us and does deliver he will deliver you he'll protect you he'll preserve you and he will be there for you is the husband of the widow and is the partner of uh, the widower and is the father of the fatherless he does deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us whatever will come again the Lord will continue to deliver look at first Thessalonians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11 first Thessalonians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11 in verse 11 as you know how we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his children when we go to comfort the people that have any challenge we do it as a father does his children as a as a mother does to the children as a relative a real close friend you are not there only speaking the words of mouth and it is superficial and it's not deep in your heart you come under their skin and you sympathize with them and you empathize with them you feel their pain you sh you cry with them you are sorrowful with them and yet you bring them out of the deep waters of sorrow where they are as she knew how we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says but we were gentle among you you are not uh, you are not sharp on them you are gentle with them why are you sorrowful what's the matter what has happened to you that has not happened to another person before never don't talk like that you are gentle among them even as a nurse cherishes a children and then in verse 8 in verse 8 so being affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only but also our own souls if uh, somebody is bereaved if uh, it's a sister that is bereaved and then uh, to uh, help so she doesn't feel so lonely and alone sisters will go in turns and stay with her and sleep overnight with her if a brother is bereaved it's not just okay we come and we comfort and console but the brother that is bereaved now all alone and 
and he's uh, thinking all alone am i going to spend the rest of my life in this uh, big house i'm the only one uh, you know here now how can i manage brothers will take turns and we will go to them and uh, you know they'll be cooking fellowship and everything uh, so that they will not feel the pressure of what had happened unto them it says being so affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you uh, not only the gospel of god but also our own souls because you were dear unto us as we look at the church people are dear to us they are precious to us and therefore if they are going through any challenge will make sure that we comfort each other wherefore comfort one another with these words and as you go let the comforter the holy spirit go with you and abide with you he remains within you and so the comforter will bring words of comfort appropriate words that will enrich the lives of the people encourage the people and as we do that the children of god will be preserved and then on the final day when christ shall come we are preserved they are preserved the whole church the saints they are preserved and the trumpet shall sound and the dead in christ shall rise and then all of us are you there I did hear your voice and then all of us those of us that remain alive we shall be caught up together with them and so shall we you and I ever be with the Lord forever and ever in Jesus name all that you are doing today in ministering to the saints and getting the sinners to come into the kingdom that's the time you receive your reward every little thing every drop of water and every loaf of bread you have given and everything you have done you will not lose your reward in jesus name the lord is coming i said the lord is coming i will be ready we will all be ready and then none of us will miss our reward in jesus name let's rise up now and take whatever we have learned to the lord in prayer the lord is coming and he wants you to be ready please pray open your mouth and tell the lord thank the lord for what you have understood today and for the depth of what he has he has revealed unto you when he comes you'll not be found wanting